Hello everybody, this is Rusty here. Today we are checking out Firewatch. Firewatch is a, looks to be a pretty cool game about a guy that is going through a very rough spot in his life, uh, cannot make a decision on what he believes is right or wrong, and takes the summer off to basically work in a fire tower and figure things out. Let's get at it. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. You see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So, what's your, you know, major? You slur the word major and it smells like cores. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says. And I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? Was that a burn? You ask. She says definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. You pick up the beagle and she names him Bucket. Bucket's a good dog and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer. 9.30 p.m. and the heat still irradiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? They're not very smart. We're good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some. A couple little idiots. That would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. nineteen eighty. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. The next day, you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. 
You hold onto a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You look awesome. Nineteen eighty two. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. But by ba fuck da da dog, Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids gets waylaid by work. Julie gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not agree if she commutes back and forth. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. 1985. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. 't is getting older Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house a week later she goes back to the university 1987 Julia's affliction gets worse she can't remember things in class her research is in shambles she drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. For five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. He sits with you for a couple of months. 
you decide to move her into full-time care facility. Her family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day. Then, every other day. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, If you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut off your balls. You slowly decide to not see your old friends that much. Nineteen eighty-nine. Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You've always really liked Susan. Months go by. Bucket dies. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in on you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less. And seeing her less and less makes her forget you more, you think. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. 1989. 